I developed this idea mathematically as a perfection of economy. And these people are just cherry picking from my work and, you know, deciding, well, out of this parable of perfect economy, let's have a debt free uh, money uh, or let's have, uh, which is wrong, of course, or, uh, yeah, well, well, we'll advocate interest free money, too. You know, we don't even know the reasons. We can't give them to you, but we're another alternate solution now of, of interest-free money. G. Edward Griffin, even, has flip-flopped totally. After he, just two years ago, he explained that's not the case, that interest multiplies artificial indebtedness in proportion to ca- capacity to pay. Never mind the obfuscation of the currency launders principle into the, you know, the unjustifiable possession of the bankers, and interest does multiply debt into terminal debt. And he, and he argued against it just two years ago while Ron Paul's running for president. And now he's flip-flopped entirely, according to the Nisara site, which, however credible that is, I don't know. So I asked her, likewise, is there an alternate solution to inherent irreversible and therefore terminal multiplication of artificial indebtedness by interest? Give it to us. It's impossible even to maintain a vital circulation subject to interest without accumulating an inevitably terminal sum of artificial indebtedness because merely to maintain a vital circulation, we are implicitly forced to reborrow principal and interest paid out of the general circulation with reborrowed principal restoring the former sum of debt and thus making it mathematically impossible to pay down the sum of debt. And with reborrowed interest increasing the sum of artificial indebtedness perpetually, therefore, at an ever greater rate of ever greater periodic sums of periodic interest on an ever greater sum of debt until we suffer the very thing you see everywhere around you. That is a literal expression of the mathematics. Now, if you don't get it, that's one thing. Okay, sorry. But the thing is, you can get it. Reasonably intelligent person can understand those words. And they can just read that paragraph over and over again, play it again, whatever. you know. But there's a perfect expression of the very mechanics that my models implemented in 1983 and 4 to project that this economy would collapse at approximately the current year. Now, wouldn't you want to listen to that guy if he's saying one and one only solution and he's been here for 40 years and it's just possible that a bunch of people like G. Edward Griffin, Ellen Hodgson Brown, Stephen Zarlinga, Bill Stills, who have, who've gone from the opposites toward my solution, morphing their pretended authority into mine because they were wrong, 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 wrong all the way. Wouldn't you think you might want to talk to that guy, have a very serious discussion with him? And if he says, you have to understand this, you know, by God, you do. Because why are these other people advocating eradication of interest who are just copying me? Without a reason? And that's why you do it? Jesus, for 40 years, people have been telling me, well, no one would... Lend us money if it weren't subject to interest. It's my articles. Interest is usury. It's my articles explaining this thesis of, of, of inevitable failure and singular solution, which have got so many people saying these things now. But they're not the original authors of these, and they are not an advocate who can even explain these things in the, in the terms you have to understand them to realize whether or not indeed there are multiple solutions or one and one only solution. It's a huge difference. And there isn't leeway to decide one or the other just haphazardly. One thing is solution. So I go on. Um, This is what's so wrong, I say. Here, without even anyone citing an alternate solution, we merely presume we can do some other thing than solve a set of problems which have one solution. And here we are today without solution because it is because it is we the people who are shooting ourselves in the foot. In case you don't know it, I have a new radio show broadcasting to at least 17 countries from TNS Radio and elsewhere by, I don't know, Patty told me 20 
to further stations. I have no idea, to tell you the truth. Every Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time. The show runs at least three hours. Links to archives. Uh, I was hoping Brigitte and Thor Einerson would be listening today. Links to archives of the first programs, at least, and there's a couple other people from Iceland who have contacted me also. Uh, which are vital background for understanding each succeeding program are posted on my group at TNS Radio and so I go on. There are people all over the world, Brigida, who are now agreeing that indeed there is in fact only one solution to each and every one of the category, categoric faults I have pointed out to you. If you contend otherwise still, and as the fate of Iceland hinges on your belief, why not cite and prove your assertion on the show? You can call me at any time, which is convenient for you. We can record our discussion. And so, for the benefit of Iceland and the world, we, we can present our sides of the controversy, that the world decides its fate. Why not? We need to take this far more seriously if the world is to have a real solution. What is it? Spending money into circulation? You should download the first three show archives from links at TNS. I cover all these propositions. Pass the links or files to others that the people may listen and weigh each argument. Let's hear about these other solutions, if you have any. For what are we to do? otherwise. Warm regards, as always, in the interest of real solution, Mike. Now, if I might back up here, I mentioned this other fellow and I bleeped out his name in the, um, I cut his name out of the, uh, you know, the fellow from Israel who's presenting mathematically perfected economy to China and all these other countries, <clears throat> wanting a percentage of the GDP. You know, I meant to make it clear that this person and no one else is representing me. I mean, there are certain people who come very close to representing me very, very well. But those people, when serious discussions are needed, uh, hand it right over to me. And a good person like that is, is Jack Schott, who's, you know, founder of, you know, this uh, and the European Central Bank's web presence. But the fact of the matter is, um, I happen to know that foreign countries are watching my work. And um, the thing is, uh, there's, this is an espionage. Um, this is not a betrayal of our country. After all, if we're unwilling to do this ourselves and some countries such as China adopted mathematically perfected economy, assumably our reasons against this are that it's bad for us to have mathematically perfected e economy. What a, what a um, tragedy it would be if we only had to pay a house for a house. You know, we need bankers. We need to pay interest for money. I mean, um, we should pay for houses for a house just in interest to somebody who, who merely publishes evidence of our promissory obligations together. Of course we should. You know, and, and in the meanwhile, we've expatriated all of our industry by this indebtedness, you know, pushing industry out so it can save enough to just hang on for a while. And we, we, we still need banks. We still need banks, okay? So if that's where you're at, you know, I mean, uh, is it wrong um, to encourage a um, country like Ireland or England or Spain, Greece, Italy, France, Germany, where one of my most blatant plagiarists, Margaret, Margaret Kennedy, you know, um, is, 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 you know, she's, She's possibly the most ambitious one of the plagiarists. Uh, you know, but sorry, Margaret Kennedy didn't come up with this stuff. You know, she stole it. And Engl uh, Germany hasn't done mathematically perfected economy. And, well, you have to wonder why. But why doesn't, why doesn't the German government contact me? Why doesn't the Grecian government contact me. Why not Italy? Why not Spain? Why not France? You see, why not, uh, why not the people of Ireland, if not the government of Ireland? Well, in truth, 
the people are. Now, they're trying to promote, usually, to the government. But as I've explained, I've, I've been doing this for 40 years, you know. The reason the government isn't doing anything isn't because the government knows it's right. It's because the government knows it's wrong, that it's not even responding. So that's the problem. That's the thing that we have to get get over here. Now, the thing is, is as I explained to this fellow in Israel, or attempted to explain to him as he's shouting at me and insisting that we make a huge profit off this somehow, you know. Um, mathematically perfected economy is free. That means that the government of China, Greece, Brazil... Venezuela, Mexico, Canada, France, England, Germany, Ireland. All these people can contact me. And why haven't they is what you should want to know. You know. And I've got people regularly trying to make inroads. Now, if the government of Greece, for instance, which is in dire trouble, you know, uh, if they wanted to solve these problems, why not talk to me, you know? We can immediately convert a country into a mathematically perfected economy. And I published how to do this many years ago. Originally, formally, for the first time in 1979. And we could do these things. And they can Skype me just like you can. They can Skype me at PFMPE2012. That stands for People for Mathematically Perfected Economy 2012. PFMP2012. Anyone in the world can contact me. Now, I'm not going to do something to betray my own country. I'm doing something to save the world from worldwide monetary failure. The government of China has been watching me. How do I know this? Well, for one thing, I don't get any traffic to China. None. I'm filtered out. Mathematically perfected economy. Taboo for China? Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, possibly uh, it's just something that, uh, you know, um, uh, fits into a bunch of categories that are more obtuse in general, which uh, are automatically filtered out so that the Chinese people can't view them. But many people here in the United States were wondering and asking me uh, what... What are we going to do about all this debt to China? And uh, they were asking me, you know, to blog on this. And uh, um, during the uh, Olympics over there or thereabouts, um, I uh, I finally, you know, responded. A lot of things I take care of immediately, but there's things that I have to do sometimes, which, you know, I've got enough work to keep five or ten of me at least fully occupied 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and I finally, nonetheless, answered to these people's wishes and gave an idea of what the situation is, which is untenable. Except, if you understand it from my perspective, in other words, I can take care of the interests of the American people and the Chinese people by conversion to mathematically perfected economy. You can do it very easily. Now, if I told that on this show, I would have plagiarists all over the world, probably in no time at all. We can. I'm going to read an article here by Ellen Hodgson Brown. She's answering to this show already. She's proposing that what we really need is an is another cur a concept of currency, and it's a preposterous thing that she's proposing because she's not prepared to 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 propose an alternate solution. So she's stuck. But um, what I'm what I'm getting across is there is an instant solution for every country in the world. Now that sounds preposterous, but that's how. That's how far down the road I have figured these things, if you will. And we're not talking about getting a bright idea in my head. This all fits into a model that I developed so long ago 
which predicted this failure, but also serves at the same time